Okay, so get this. Picture those like classic postcard beaches, right? White sand, turquoise water, the whole nine yards. But what if those beaches were like literally vanishing? Yeah, that's a pretty unsettling thought. It is, and that's what we're diving into today. We're going deep on some research that tackles exactly that. The delicate balance of tourism and, uh, well, disappearing coastlines. Sounds intense. It is. The article is called Beach Conditions for Guiding the Sandy Beach Management in Phuket, Thailand. And it really gets into the nitty gritty of what's happening to Phuket's famous beaches. Phuket is like a textbook example of this whole global dilemma. How do we balance you know, our love of these amazing vacation spots with the impact of, well, us being there. Exactly. So for anyone who needs a quick geography refresher, Phuket Island is in the Andaman Sea just off the coast of Thailand. Right. And its western side is basically a string of, get this, 33 sandy beaches. Wow, 33. Yeah, it's that classic image, right? Palm trees, crystal clear water, those dramatic limestone cliffs. No wonder it's a tourism magnet. Totally. And while Phuket has like an incredibly diverse ecosystem, mangroves, muddy beaches, tons more, we're zeroing in on those sandy stretches that everyone flocks to. Makes sense. Those are the ones really feeling the pressure. Exactly. And uh, as the research points out, that popularity comes with some, well, some serious consequences. So this research gets down to the nitty gritty of those consequences, right? They used four, uh, what do they call them? Indices, I think. Yeah, four indices. Okay, four indices to assess the health of Phuket's beaches. I'm kind of dying to know more about these indices. What are we even measuring here? Good question. These indices basically break down the different pressures each beach is facing. So the first one is the Urbanization Index, or UI, and it basically measures the impact of human activity. Okay, so like, are we talking uh, pollution and stuff? Yeah, things like noise pollution from, you know, development and construction, how easy it is to access the beach, and sadly, the amount of waste that ends up there. It really highlights how that, like, development and urban sprawl can creep into these pristine natural spaces. It's kind yeah. of sad. Okay, so what about the Conservation Index, or CI? What's that all about? The CI is all about the natural environment, mm. which, you know, is kind of important for a beach. Right. It looks at things like the height of the dunes, the amount of vegetation, how wide the beach is, and even whether sea turtles are nesting there. Hold on, turtle nests. That's amazing. I never would have thought of that as a, a, a measure of a beach's health. Well, it makes sense when you think about it, right? Sea turtles need very specific conditions to nest successfully. So if they're there, it's a good sign that the ecosystem is in decent shape. Plus, those dunes aren't just random piles of sand. They actually act as natural barriers, you know, mm. protecting the beach from erosion and storm surges. Oh, wow. I always just thought of dunes as, well, dunes. I never realized how important they were for the uh, for the whole coastline. So, okay, we've got the human impact with the urbanization index and the natural environment with the conservation index. What about, like, the fun factor? I'm guessing that's where the recreation index comes in. You got it. The recreation index, or RI assesses how well-equipped a beach is for all the things we love to do there. Okay, so, like, is there a snack bar? Are there, like, volleyball nets? Exactly. Okay. Think about infrastructure like hotels, restaurants, those volleyball nets, lifeguard stations. It also looks at safety and accessibility. It's like measuring how beach-ready each spot is. Exactly. And the RI gets to a really important concept called physical carrying capacity, which basically means how many people a beach can handle before, you know, things start to get unpleasant. Oh, yeah. I've definitely been to beaches that were so packed it was hard to even find a spot to put down a towel. Not exactly relaxing. Right. And it's not just about our enjoyment either. When a beach exceeds its carrying capacity, the environment really takes a hit. You start to see more trash, damage to vegetation, and even disruptions to wildlife. So the Recreation Index is kind of about striking a balance between our desire to enjoy these places and the need to, well, to protect them. Which brings us to the last index, and probably the most serious one, the Threat Index. Yeah, this is where it gets real. The Threat Index, or TI, measures how vulnerable a beach is to natural hazards, particularly erosion and sea level rise. And Phuket, like so many coastal areas, is right on the front lines of climate change. It's actually kind of terrifying when you think about it. I mean, how do you even begin to measure something like that? It's definitely complex. The researchers used a combination of historical data and projections to try and estimate how much coastline can be lost. They took into account things like the slope of the beach, wave patterns, and of course, the predicted rise in sea levels. Okay, so before we get into all of that, I have to ask, what did the research actually find? Like, how are Fouquet's beaches actually doing? 
Well, here's the thing that really surprised me. Every single one of the 33 beaches they studied scored on the threat index. Wait, so every single beach in Phuket is vulnerable to these threats? Every one? Every single one. Which means we're not just talking about losing a bit of sand here and there. We're talking about potentially losing entire beaches, along with the ecosystems and communities that depend on them. This is heavy stuff. It makes you realize just how urgent this issue really is. So faced with these alarming findings, what can actually be done? What are the researchers proposing? Well, the good news is uh, this research doesn't just point out the problems, you know. It actually lays out some potential solutions. And what's really cool is that the researchers propose tailoring those solutions to each beach's like unique set of challenges. Okay, so it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. I like that. What kind of solutions are we talking about here? They break it down into three main categories, protection, regulation, and restoration. All right, let's unpack that. Protection seems pretty straightforward, safeguarding what's already there. What does that look like, like, in practice? Well, one of the key things is protecting and maintaining those dune systems we were talking about. Yeah. You know, remember, those dunes act as natural barriers against erosion, and the plants that grow on them help to stabilize the sand. Right, right. The researchers also emphasized the importance of preserving the, um, the biodiversity of the whole ecosystem. Yeah. It's about recognizing that a healthy beach is part of a larger, you know, interconnected web of life. It's like that saying, everything is connected. You can't just focus on one part of the ecosystem without considering the whole. So what about regulation? That sounds a bit more, well, regulatory. Well, regulation is all about managing human activities to, like, minimize our impact. Okay. This can include things like managing beach access, maybe... Um, Maybe by limiting the number of visitors at any given time or designating specific zones for different activities. Yep. The study also highlighted the need to determine the carrying capacity for each beach. Right. We talked about that earlier, figuring out how many people a beach can handle before it starts to feel overcrowded and the environment starts to suffer. I'm picturing those signs at national parks that say trail closed due to overcrowding. Exactly. And then there's the issue of pollution control. The study found that uh, wastewater pollution and just plain old trash on the beach were significant problems in some areas. Yeah, for sure. Implementing stricter regulations on wastewater treatment and waste disposal is crucial, along with public awareness campaigns to encourage everyone to, you know, do their part. It sounds like a combination of top-down regulations and, uh, and bottom-up behavioral change. <laughs> okay, so we've covered protection and regulation. What about restoration? Is it even possible to, like, undo the damage that's already been done? Restoration focuses on actively repairing and uh, revitalizing damaged ecosystems. Okay. One strategy is beach cleaning. Simple, but essential for removing all the debris and litter. Right. Then there's beach nourishment, which we touched on before. It involves adding sand to replenish what's been lost to erosion. It's like giving the beach a little facelift. Exactly. And then there's dune restoration, which involves planting vegetation that helps stabilize the dunes and encourage them to recover. The researchers also suggested a more complex approach that combines engineering structures with beach nourishment. I'm intrigued. What does that look like? Picture this. You build structures like breakwaters or seawalls to help protect the coastline from erosion. But instead of stopping there, you also add sand to create a wider beach. It's a way of like working with nature to make the coastline more resilient while still preserving those beautiful beaches we all love. So it's not an either-or situation. It's about finding the right balance between hard engineering and more natural solutions. Precisely. And that brings us to a really crucial point. The study emphasized the need to shift from managing individual beaches in isolation to taking a more holistic approach that considers the entire coastline as an interconnected system. That makes sense. It's like thinking about the health of the whole body instead of just treating individual symptoms. You have to address the root causes. Exactly. They called this approach integrated coastal management, and it's an idea that's gaining momentum worldwide as we grapple with these growing pressures on our coastlines. Integrated coastal management. It sounds like a pretty big undertaking, requiring collaboration between different government agencies, scientists, local communities, and even the tourism industry. It definitely involves a lot of moving parts. But the study argued that this collaborative approach is absolutely essential if we want to protect these precious coastal resources for the long haul. It's not just about preserving beaches for tourists. It's about safeguarding the livelihoods of the people who live there, protecting biodiversity, and mitigating the impacts of climate change. That's a great point. 
This isn't just about saving pretty beaches. It's about people, ecosystems, and the future of entire communities. So how do we even begin to make this happen? Where do we start? It feels like we've uncovered this whole like web of interconnected issues, you know? Fouquet's story is really a microcosm of what coastal communities are dealing with all over the planet. Oh, absolutely. Rising sea levels, erosion, the pressures of tourism. These are global challenges. And that can feel pretty overwhelming. Like, what can one person actually do? Yeah. Right? It's easy to feel like your individual actions are, you know, just a drop in the ocean, so to speak. Exactly. But those individual actions really do matter. Okay, I was hoping you were going to say that, but like, what does that even look like? Give me specifics. Well, think about it. Millions of people making small changes. That adds up to something huge. One of the most powerful things we can do is be more uh, conscious travelers. I love that. But what does that mean in real life? It means being thoughtful about the destinations we choose and the businesses we support. Look for hotels, tour operators, restaurants that prioritize sustainability. Okay. Do a little research, you know. Check for eco certifications. Read reviews. Make sure the places you're spending your money are actually committed to minimizing their environmental impact. So it's about putting our money where our values are, basically. Supporting businesses that are doing things the right way. What else can we do while we're actually on vacation? Honestly, a lot of it comes down to common sense. Things like reducing our plastic consumption, disposing of waste properly, respecting local ecosystems. Yeah. All that makes a difference. Even choosing to walk or bike instead of taking a taxi helps reduce our carbon footprint. It's about recognizing that even those small actions can have like a ripple effect. Yeah. But individual actions are only one piece of the puzzle, right? What about the bigger picture stuff, like government policies and regulations? You hit the nail on the head. Advocating for responsible coastal management policies is crucial. Okay. We can support organizations that are fighting to protect our coastlines, contact our elected officials to let them know these issues matter to us, stay informed about any proposed developments in our communities. So it's about using our voices to create change on a larger scale. Speaking of larger scale solutions, did the researchers offer any specific policy recommendations? They did. They strongly advocated for integrated coastal management plans. You know, that holistic approach we talked about. Right, right. These plans need to consider everyone who has a stake in the coast. Local communities, indigenous groups, scientists, the tourism industry. Everyone needs to be at the table. It's about finding solutions that work for everyone, not just like one group or industry. Exactly. And these plans need real teeth. Strong regulations to control pollution, limit development in vulnerable areas, protect vital ecosystems. This deep dive has really been an eye-opener. The challenges facing Fouquet's beaches and coastlines all over the world are definitely complex. But knowing that there are solutions out there, from individual actions to these big-picture policy changes, is actually pretty inspiring. I agree. It's easy to get discouraged when you think about the scale of these problems. But each of us really does have a role to play in protecting these incredible places. So next time you're daydreaming about that perfect beach vacation, remember what we've uncovered here today. Choose destinations and businesses that are committed to sustainability, be mindful of your impact while you're there, and speak up for policies that protect our coastlines, because those sandy shores, they're worth fighting for.